Okay, today I'm going to play through adventure number one from the Dungeons and Dragons, The Legend of Drizzt board game. Now, I've actually had this game for about a year now, but it's sat unopened in the box the entire time. But today I finally got around to unboxing it, taking everything out, and setting it up. Now, this game is quite old. It's been around for around 10 years, I think. So if you're interested in seeing a fresh unboxing or a detailed walkthrough of the game, there are other YouTube channels that cover all of that. I'm assuming if you're finding this video, you probably already know how to play the game. So we're just going to jump right into it. All right, so an adventure number one is Exile, and it's a pretty simple uh, escape the dungeon type of type of adventure. And I've already gone through the setup, which requires us to place the start tile on the table, done that, place the hero on the tile, I've done that, and I've taken the underground river and shuffled it into the uh, stack of dungeon tiles underneath of the eighth tile, so that means it'll be the ninth tile we draw. And I have never played Legend of Drizzt before, although I played Castle Ravenloft quite a few times, and I played Temple of Elemental Evil quite a few times. But this is my first time playing The Legend of Drizzt. So I did choose Drizzt as my uh, my hero that I'll be playing as. Um, I haven't actually read over the card very much, though, so let me just take a quick look at that. I do know that he has, like, a double attack, which is awesome. Uh, it says that you're an expert combatant. You can make an additional attack during your hero phase. That is just super awesome. Okay, and what else? Uh, so, oh yeah, starting awards. So one thing that's slightly different between this game and the uh, Castle Ravenloft is that instead of starting with one random item and two healing surges for every game, you you start the game according to whatever the starting awards are. And in this case, we're starting with one healing surge and one random item card from the treasure deck. So let me go ahead and draw that random item from the treasure deck. So this is exactly the same thing we do for every adventure in Castle Ravenloft. And we're looking for an item, so that's not an item. And you just discard anything that's not an item. So these probably aren't shuffled very well, but I did shuffle them. Obviously not very well. All right, there's our item, so we'll take it. It is a flask of oil. I don't know how good that is. We'll look at it later. So let me go ahead and put the treasure cards back. I guess we'll just leave them there. We'll just set our treasure discard here because I'm just having a hard time picking these up. All right. So yeah, we're just going to play through. There's nothing special that we have to do until we get to the underground river. So I'll set that aside. And one thing I started doing with my Castle Ravenloft game was having this tracker sheet, which I think should be included in the game, to be honest, because it's so easy to forget to do things. All right, so we're starting off with eight hit points, so we're just going to put that right up there, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I keep track of things as we go through the game. All right, so starting the hero phase, we're going to move. We can move up to our movement speed, which is seven. For Drizzt, um, we have plenty of options, though, so we're just going to move to the edge of an unexplored... Uh, we're going to move to the unexplored edge of the tile, and we're going to draw our first tile. And we got a white tile, which means no encounter, but we do place a monster. So the way I keep track of things here in the hero phase is I'm just going to put a dash through that indicating that I'm acknowledging that I'm not using a healing surge. I moved. We don't have an attack action for the first turn, and we don't draw a treasure item for the first turn because there's nothing to attack. I am exploring, so I'm just going to indicate yes. It was a white tile, and now I will place the monster. So let's go to the monster pile. Draw up a monster. Let's see what we get. And we have a hypnotic spirit. Okay, so I'm not super familiar with these monsters, so... Okay, so that must be this guy here. Yeah, that looks like the one on the card. And we place it onto the mushroom pile. Okay, so let's go ahead and update our sheet. So we place the monster, so I'll just put hip. And there's not going to be any blessing or condition. 
there's no encounter, there's no villain out yet, and we have a hypnotic spirit. So this just helps me keep track of things, helps me keep track of blessings and conditions and all that. And then kind of one of the most important things is the treasure. And if you watch YouTube, you'll notice like just about everybody that plays this game forgets to draw treasure cards. Okay, so uh, he the hero phase has en ended, the exploration phase has ended. So now we're into the villain phase and we're just going to jump straight into the attack action of the hypnotic spirit. <clears throat> So if the Hypnotic Spirit is within one tile of a hero, which it is, it's going to move to the closest hero's tile and attack each hero on that tile with a horrifying howl. So the rules state that when monsters move from tile to tile, they go from, um, in Castle Ravenloft, it would be bone pile to bone pile, but in this game it's going to be like mushroom patch to mushroom patch. So it's not adjacent to us, but it moves here, and attacks with a plus six. And Driz AC, his armor class, is 16. So we needed to roll a nine or lower in order to miss us. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll in this tray. My rule is if I accidentally bounce the dice out, I'm going to re-roll it no matter what. So I'll try not to bounce the dice out. All right, so we got a 13 which is obviously going to be enough to hit Drizzt, because 13 plus 6 is 19, which is more than my armor class. So we're going to take 1 damage. So we go from 8 hit points down to 7, and that will be the end of turn number 1.